And in this video, I want to explore why you don't heal. Why do you feel like you're stuck even though you're doing everything right? You're eating healthy, clean food, you're exercising, you're meditating, yet you're not where you want to be in terms of your health goals. Or maybe this is impacting another aspect of your life, business, relationships, etc. What causes us to become stuck even though we feel like we're on this hamster wheel doing everything we know we ought to be doing? So this video is an extension of another video I did recently about how to align with one's true self. Authenticity. Authenticity equaling optimal health and this optimal state of being. So in this video, I want to explore what the possible misalignments can be. So how does that show up in one's life? What specifically does that look like in terms of these factors or extensions of what I call zero point root causes that, you know, can block us from experiencing the success that we desire? So in the previous video, I stated that ultimately when we get into health conditions, health concerns, it boils down to two zero point root causes. Trauma that gets stuck in our system that we haven't eliminated and or what I call dishonoring our soul's calling. Now we're gonna expand on those and talk about, well, how does that look when it's showing up in your life? What specifically does that look like? So why don't people heal? And it really boils down to this lack of alignment, but misalignments can show up in various ways. Now, the context around this, the premise that we're working off of is that in order to manifest health and really anything in your life, anything that you want, anything that you desire, energetic alignment is needed between your body, psyche, and heart and soul, body, mind, spirit, or soul. And when we are in alignment in those three aspects of our life, that is what brings about this healing state, which is sometimes often called flow state. Okay, so you could see that in this diagram here. Our body or physical health, our mind and or emotional health, and our spiritual health, our soul, um, our soul's calling, that's where this comes into play. So when all three of these are in alignment with higher self, with our true authentic self, that creates this healing state or flow state. So how does this show up in one's life? What specifically does this look, look like? So too often people just rely on the physical only interventions. They kind of get bogged down in addressing the physical root causes. Right? If I take enough supplements, if I restrict my diet enough, if I do enough exercise, then I'm going to heal. And that is going to provide some benefit. However, if your energy body is stuck and blocked, if you have trapped emotions and trauma in your body, then you're not going to see the results that you desire if you're just working solely on your physical health. So when we're in this healing flow state, less extreme physical actions are actually required. You still need to take action, absolutely. You can't just eat junk food all the time and expect to feel happy. That's not what we're saying. But when you do take those physical actions, a lot less effort is required. It doesn't necessarily have to be this intense, you know, extreme version of health that's often, um, you know, uh, represented in social media by these health influencers. When your body, mind, and spirit are in alignment, the action that you take doesn't necessarily have to be a lot because it's going to be that much more effective. Okay. So what are the types of misalignments that can, that can happen in one's life? Well, they can happen at the body level. So we'll look at that first. The most common one that I see in practice working with clients is nervous system dysregulation. So in order for our intentions uh, of healing to manifest, your nervous system needs to register that you are in a happy, positive, relaxed, uplifted state. 
it's not that you have to be like that all the time. That's not what we're saying here, but you're spending most of your time in what's called the parasympathetic state, which is our rest and digest state. That's where all the healing happens. So new calming and balancing neural pathways in the brain wire together in a heightened emotional state. So the longer that you can kind of be consistent and spend time in that emotional state, the more probability you have of laying down these new new neural pathways over the old neural pathways and that being your new state. So while we can release a negative emotion in a few seconds, it can often take more effort and more practice to rewire one's nervous system that has become wired from a chronic high sympathetic nervous system response. So we're talking like a chronic response, a state where someone's kind of gotten stuck in the sympathetic state or what's called dorsal um, vagal, which is more that withdrawn or dissociated state. So it's not like part of the human condition is we're going to be bouncing down to those lower rungs or lower states of the nerve autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and dorsal vagal. That's not the issue. We're all going to feel those um, experiences. The issue is that we're spending more of our time in those lower states and not re-anchoring ourselves back to the parasympathetic or that sense of safety, that rest and digest state. So people with a history of cumulative stress or maybe highly sensitive types are particularly prone to developing an oversensitized limbic system in the brain. So our body needs to feel safe all the way down to our core, all the way down to the cellular level in order for healing to take place. This is a really common block that I see in practice. Now, what's often associated with trauma is a specific type of trauma, which is called post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. You've probably heard of that. Now, PTSD is when there is a specific one-off event or events that occurred in the past. It's not a chronic um, ongoing source of trauma like developmental trauma is, okay? So usually this is going to be a one-off event or event sometimes that have occurred in one's past. Now, when this happens, sometimes it can be difficult to release the stress that has uh, occurred in response to this trigger. And very often unresolved PTSD can sabotage one's intentions for health. So just understand that PTSD is a rarer form of trauma. It is not as common uh, in comparison to developmental trauma. And the good news is that it is curable. There's many effective therapies that are effective at addressing and resolving PTSD. Okay. At the body level, sometimes it's a case of like environmental changes being needed. Your biology profoundly affects how your mind is functioning. So your feelings of optimism, confidence, well-being. There is a mind-body connection. I think most people um, can agree on that. The body-mind is bidi bidirectional, right? It goes both ways. So we need to have those physical states of homeostasis in order to help you do the psychological, emotional work, energetic work as well. And when we do that, those other types of work become a lot easier as well. If we're in a con constant state of fatigue, for example, right, fatigue or anxiety that's caused by blood sugar issues, I see that a lot in cases of social anxiety. Often there's blood sugar dysregulation. Um, or if you're noticing those symptoms because of something like lack of sunlight or maybe insomnia, you need to address those, right? Those, those factors need to be addressed. All right, so that's the body level. And then the next level we're going to look at is at the psycho-emotional level. So this is of the mind slash emotions. So one factor that can happen are unconscious trapped emotions. Now, what does that look like? 
Well, you can set your positive intention to cure symptoms, you know, to be doing your work on a physical level. But if there's unconscious chronic trapped emotions, they're going to create sh- stress in the body and that results in a blockage. It could be a blockage to energy flowing through the body. It can be a blockage to information getting where it needs to go. And usually this is going to look like unexplained medical symptoms, right? Which is, you know, often how it's referred to. I'll give you some examples. So one example is that pain in your shoulder that could be related to feeling too much responsibility, like literally shouldering too many burdens. Or maybe the chronic pain in your back is actually related to the fact that you feel trapped in a relationship. Maybe you have low energy because you're still carrying a lot of resentment for past injustices or perceived losses. Okay, hopefully you get the idea. And in these cases, when this, you know, this is happening, no amount of dietary um, changes, exercising, meditation, etc. is going to resolve the fact that you aren't dealing with the psycho-emotional issues in your life. You can't eat your way out of, you know, um, a type of metaphysical root cause. So we'll go over some exercises at the end that can be of help to work through Um, trapped emotions, and some of these other uh, blockages that can come up. Another possible mismatch or misalignment that can happen more on the psyche or mind level are what are called secondary gains from illness. So what do I mean by that? Well, one part of you very well, you know, uh, truly wants to be healed, truly wants to get better. But often another part and this often is happening more on an unconscious or subconscious level, is getting a secondary gain from being ill. And it's a type of self-sabotage in a sense. So what this could look like, gains from an illness could look like avoiding discomfort that comes from making the necessary needed changes, right? Maybe there's a dietary change, lifestyle change, Uh, environmental change that you know that if you just did that your life would be so much better accepting change is a necessary part of recovery and so you know one kind of prompt you can ask yourself is am I ready for this change or do I have resistance just to change itself okay so it could just simply be avoiding the discomfort that comes with stepping outside of one's comfort zone right um Avoiding facing your own fears, traumas, or stressors, which are needed in order to release them. Sometimes there's a fear fear of actually experiencing or feeling that discomfort that can come from facing our trauma and processing that. So, you know, it takes courage. Am I ready for this? Avoiding and engaging with life fully, you know, fear of failure, fear of other people, fear of what other people think of you. Those are types of fears that can come up. So it's about this commitment to be willing to fully engage in life again, right? If there's a part of you that wants to stay in this comfort zone, um, then the life force energy drops and your body is going to simply mirror that. Some people do develop identity needs, and gain a degree of support and attention that couldn't otherwise be received without being ill, right? If you think of someone that's stuck in like a a victim consciousness around being ill, and that becomes part of their identity, there may be other people in their lives, maybe caregivers, loved ones, that are supporting that victim consciousness further, by, you know, through maybe codependency or other dynamics in the relationships. Um, yeah, it's, it's, they've identified with that illness. They've taken that on as part of who they are when that's not really the case. So if you're getting the support and attention from being ill, your mind may think, well, I need to stay in this state if I want to keep a hold of that attention and that care. So it can often take a great deal of courage to heal, to have the authenticity to face the truth about yourself and others. And as always, you you just want to have this compassion for yourself um, that, you know, you're doing the best within the context that 
you're within and then there's lessons to be learned it's not about looking at this in you know through the lens of self-blame or self um judgment another possible misalignment that can happen at the level of the psyche is being over identified with our mind really this is gonna be applicable to all of us to varying degrees we dissociate from feelings because they were too painful or often we're taught like there's certain programming that we've been exposed to during childhood that taught us our feelings didn't matter so in general and this is a very uh very much a generalization we generally live in an emotionally dumb society that often overemphasizes the mental intellect now we're not saying that there isn't value in mental int intellect there absolutely is i love science you're going to see a plethora of science references on this channel but at some point when we're talking about living you know th the the life experience and living fully authentically at some point you have to get out of your mind stop reading stop thinking and just jump into that actual felt experience be open and willing to experience life itself and what that feels like, all the feels that come along with that. Another big factor, and I would argue this is something that all of us deal with too, to varying degrees, is unresolved childhood emotional trauma, aka developmental trauma. And I see this as being much more common than PTSD. Uh, we're not comparing them in terms of their impact on any one person. Uh, I don't see any value in doing that. They're they're both they're both important to address. So simple conscious intention setting is not going to work if we're still giving away large amounts of our healing life force to the impacts of developmental trauma. So chronic stress that happened. Um, typically prior to age 18. Now it's estimated that over 67% of adults have experienced trauma in childhood. I think that's a gross underestimate. I think that number is much higher. Um, a high level of childhood stress, we do know uh, there's something called the, the ACEs scale, dramatically increases the risk of developing a whole bunch of chronic health issues, seven out of the top 10 causes of death so associated with high mortality high morbidity as well and like i said this type of trauma is called developmental trauma it's not the same as ptsd it is far more common and this is what leads to survival traits we develop these coping strategies and behaviors they serve us well to get through and survive childhood but not in service to us as um, we get into adulthood and in fact usually maladaptive and detrimental in our adulthood another factor that can happen and impact us on more of the psyche level is mass consciousness and the impact of culture so a lot of people have no idea that human consciousness is spiraling through distinct levels of development. So in terms of the expansion of our consciousness at a collective level, large amounts of developmental psychology research support this. All children go through these levels of development as well. So we go through this on an individual level as well as a collective level. Right? The collective um, human population is expanding in its consciousness and going through various stages as well. Now, another aspect to this is that whole communities and even countries tend to stop development at a particular consciousness level. So often groups at each level are holding a particular value system, maybe a set of beliefs that inherently assumes this is the way life is okay so it creates this box around which we must live without realizing often just because we're not questioning this programming that we've been handed down the assumption is never questioned and it's just taken at face value as being real when oftentimes it's not 
So many of these value systems and beliefs can be greatly sabotaging our healing and our recovery. So it's important to consider that as well. What impact has mass consciousness and culture had on my health? And again, this is one of these factors that probably every one of us has been impacted by to varying degrees. And then we have the impact of other people. So again, a really common one. Other people have a tremendous impact on our ability to heal and get better. Even just the simple example of we set an intention for healing, we start undertaking and implementing these necessary action steps, life changes, and often there's going to be people in our life that question that and say, what are you doing? There's no point or you're never going to make it. So you face opposition, lack of support, or even ridicule for these changes that you're implementing in your life. So healing from a chronic complex illness often requires a level of soul searching and transformations that often, you know, you, you're a different person, you know, uh, than you, you would have been had you not undergone that transformation, right? You're closer to embodying your high, your highest self, true authentic self. And that often involves needing to let go of certain people that are not supporting you to do that, that are not in support of that um, expansion of consciousness and the healing that you desire to undergo. Right, so, so those are some of the possible misalignments that can happen at the psyche or mind level. And then the third and final level is at the, at the heart or soul level, at the level of spirit. So, you know, this one, uh, your heart's true desire is um, related to not heeding our soul's calling or dishonoring our soul's calling. So here we get illnesses and symptoms because we're not listening to our authentic self, also known as our heart's desire or soul self. self. So some specific examples, symptoms and of pain and fatigue come on every time you feel pressured to go do something. Um, or do something that you really don't want to do, uh, including a job. You know, I've had clients where they weren't aware of the pattern that they were sick only when they were at work, right? If they were on vacation or if they had an ex extended holiday, all their symptoms disappeared. Well, what's the difference there, right? So there's some... Um, connection there around not honoring their soul's calling. This is not the work that they desire to do or are meant to be doing. Maybe you feel pain, fatigue, or other symptoms, um, not realizing that you've rejected your true sexuality or there's some part, some aspect of yourself that you're um, keeping hidden, you're suppressing, that hasn't had a chance to shine through and come out. Maybe you spend a lot of time with people you don't actually like, which can often include your family, or you're doing a job that you hate, right? You're just in these environments or under engaging in these, in these activities because you feel like you have to or you should be doing this. There's an obligation. It's not, uh, it's not what you love to do or what you desire to do. And ultimately, underneath all this is a lack of self-love and self-acceptance. Uh, and lack of empowerment that can be traced back to childhood and the trauma. So it's all interconnected. There may be a spiritual blockage. So sometimes an illness is actually a soul's call to awakening. And I often view health issues as being just that. They're these doorways through which we can step that serve a purpose to take us to this next level. They're the means, kind of the medium through which the transformation can happen. So illness can be a tool with a clear purpose that maybe you didn't imagine or you couldn't have seen. Maybe it's only in hindsight where you see that as, as being the case. You know, I often talk about when I had severe social anxiety to the point where, you know, I couldn't even leave my apartment. You know, it was all I could do just to go get groceries. But looking back on that experience, I see, although it was, it wasn't, um, I wouldn't call it a gift, right? It's not something that I would ever want to give someone else. However, I see that experience as, as having been a, a, a true blessing, I learned so much. I grew so much through that experience. I look back on it now and I'm grateful for having had that experience. 
Yes, there was a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, um, but it was a tool through which I was able to expand and to grow and I believe become a better person, a stronger person. So opening up to this whole self can be a life-changing, liberating experience that gives you a whole new perspective, a whole new frame or lens through which you see the world that maybe before you couldn't have imagined. A good example of this, and you may be familiar with this story in this video, there's a TED talk out there that I, I've linked to here called My Stroke of Insight, uh, where this neuroanatomist, uh, neuro, um, anatomist call uh, goes through and describes her experience of having a stroke and because of her background and her knowledge she can describe that experience like no one else and it's really amazing to to listen to um, you know that experience caused her in her own words to expand awareness and experience the soul uh, or state of consciousness often you know without maybe that illness, she would have had to use plant medicines or psychedelic drugs or some other substance to get to that state. Right, so those are the um, types of misalignments. So these are examples of how the lack of alignment can show up in one's life. They're all related to this state of living inauthentically, right? Either due to the effects of chronic trauma, unresolved trauma, and or not heeding one soul's calling, right? Those major two zero point root causes. But these are examples of how that could look, how it can manifest in one's life. So again, we have at the level of the mind, the body, and the spirit or soul. I'm going to provide you with three exercises to get you started to look at and address some of these misalignments, okay? So the first exercise is all about bringing awareness. So, you know, if you didn't resonate with any of those or you're not sure about which one of the misalignments may be impacting you, this is the exercise to complete. So I'll give you access to these notes. The link to the notes will be in the description of this video, but I'll also go through this verbally. So if you just want to watch this video, pause it and then journal, you know, you have that option too. So the key is that you want to answer these questions as honestly and authentically um, as you can. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? We're here to do the work. So they're really simple. You just want to write yes, if it is true for you. And if the answer is no to any of these questions, then that's when you write why. So why is it no? And you want to ask yourself, well, what would it take to turn that into a yes? Okay. <clears throat> Number one, are you really ready to make the changes necessary to heal? Two, are you ready to learn about your true self and address destructive health patterns of feelings, thoughts, and behaviors. Three, are you ready to really engage with life and live again? Four, do you believe you can recover? Do you really believe that? Five, do you understand this is an experiential process that requires time and commitment to do the exercises and change your state of being, not just read about them. It needs to be a felt experience. Do you understand that? And are you willing to have that felt experience? Have you created the time for yourself to complete the process and recover? Have you created the space and the time necessary to do all this work? Are you ready to open your mind to new ways of thinking and feeling in order to recover? Okay, so that's exercise number one. Bring some awareness to your current state. Uh, if you answer yes, move on to the next question. And if you answer no, ask yourself why and what would it take to turn that no into a yes? Okay. And then from there, you can move on to exercise two where we look at illness as the source of growth and transformation. Not a gift that you would want to give anyone else, but perhaps a blessing in disguise for you. So as you work through this process, you might find that part of your life journey was to learn about the impact of your environment on your health. Or it might have been to learn about the impact of other people, toxic relationships, relational trauma, 
and its impact on your health. Maybe an illness may have caused the true spiritual awakening that I was talking about earlier, and that is its core purpose. So understanding the purpose or reason for an illness can give us hope and I think support the faith necessary for healing to take place, right? We then look at it through this frame of faith and trusting the process and knowing, knowing deep down to our core that we can heal. We will heal. We are healing. So how does having an illness, and this could be any illness, really any symptom, if you don't have a diagnosis, a diagnosis isn't necessary to do this contemplation. How does having an illness fit into the bigger picture of the purpose of your life, your soul's calling? So again, take time to get into a state of stillness and contemplate these questions, write down your answers in a journal or notepad. Question number one, what have you learned from your experience of feeling fatigued or ill or however that's manifested for you? Anx anxious, depressed. How has it changed you? How has that illness or those symptoms changed you? How has it given you a deeper understanding about yourself? What have you learned about yourself? Um, is there any way that you've grown in understanding of self-awareness? Can you identify anything positive that the illness may have brought you? How might this experience affect your future purpose in life? Has it led to a deeper level of compassion for both yourself and others? How, how has it demonstrated your own personal strength, empowerment, or resilience? What have you learned to appreciate about yourself going through this experience? Okay, so I invite you to go through those questions. And then finally, exercise three is about finding meaning. So we can practice mindfulness around our symptoms, our illness, and discover, uncover really, if there's any meaning and purpose. So what's the metaphysical connection really with these symptoms that we're experiencing? So mindfulness simply means building awareness. So again, we want to contemplate and feel free to write these answers in your journal or notepad. What event or events triggered your health symptoms? So when you go back in your health history timeline and you recall when those symptoms first manifested, first started developing, what was going on in your life at that time or shortly before that time? Okay. And the next question prompts you to ask just that, what was happening in your life in the three to six months before your symptoms occurred? What re-triggers your symptoms? What is going on inside when they start to come on? What are the patterns there that provoke or trigger the symptoms to become worse, intensify, manifest? That often is very telling. How might your ailment reflect an unresolved psychological experiencing experience happening now or from the past. So this question relates to considering the impact of developmental trauma and even, you know, one-off uh, trauma events that could result in PTSD. What is the meaning of the ailment? What is the message it has for you? So again, if you can contemplate these in a state of stillness and just being open to the downloads that you receive, connecting with your intuition, that wisdom, that knowing is inside you already. You don't have to uh, go seeking or searching for these answers. They're there. It's more just about tapping into them or connecting with them. Okay. And then I have some supportive resources here. Um, these are some books that uh, I've learned a lot from that relate to this topic of lack of alignment and its impact on our health. So feel free to check those out. And with these exercises, um, I want to say too that if there's one that resonates more with you, feel free to focus on that one. You don't necessarily have to complete all three exercises, um, but I think if you do, you will get a lot of benefit and value from doing so as well. And then finally, just a quick reminder before we finish up here. Um, really, really common, probably the most common pitfall I notice observe in people when they're on their recovery path or their healing journey 
is that they stop too soon. So sometimes when we set an intention for healing and we start to align these parts of ourselves to manifest that outcome, we start to bring these aspects back into alignment. Recovery is not a linear process, okay? So in our minds, we often picture it as this linear progression that I'm here right now and I wanna end up here and it's just gonna be this straight line. No, it is never a linear process. Usually it'll look more like this. You go up a little bit, then you come down, up. Now generally it's gonna be exponential growth and expansion of consciousness, but there are gonna be these dips along the way. It's not gonna be simply linear, if that makes sense. And because of that, many people give up too soon because they don't under, understand how that path can play out, how that recovery happens, both emotionally, physically, psychologically, and energetically. Things are gonna take a dip. It just will happen. You will have dips along the way. And often that's gonna look like, and maybe even feel like the opposite of healing is happening. You'll wonder why, like why am I, it feels like I'm going backwards. Why am I going backwards? And for a while, it could even look like things are falling apart or that you're getting worse. Know that that is not the case. Um, even though a return of symptoms can be part of recovery, um, you know, it's a known process in a lot of healing circles, especially in terms of like homeopathy. Um, Herring's Law of Care, for example, states that all healing occurs on the inside out, so from within out and from the head down, from the top down, and in the reverse order in which symptoms have appeared. So I've seen this in practice many, many times where uh, symptoms will come up. Say, for example, um, you know, I remember a client who used to have acne when they were a teenager and she started to go into this bout of acne and she's like, you know, what is going on? I feel worse, you know, compared to my skin it feels just horrible. It looks horrible. And she was getting all stressed out. And the reason that that acne was showing up because it had been suppressed. It had been suppressed for so many years. She had taken these harsh uh, medications, pharmaceuticals to suppress the expression of that acne. So it was coming out again in order to be resolved this time. And that indeed was the case. So once she knew that that's what was happening, she understood that if I just kind of continued the process, I would reach a point where acne would no longer be a possibility for me in my life. Um, it was finally able to be healed and resolved completely rather than suppressed. She was good with that, right? She could experience that dip and know that, you know, there's light at the, uh, at the other end of the tunnel, so to speak. So, you know, just keep that in mind because you don't want to go back into a stress cycle that can make things worse. That's often the case of what makes things worse in reality, okay? So don't give up. Don't go backwards, you don't have to be in perfect alignment. What we're looking for is to reach one or more of these tipping points where essentially your whole body reorganizes itself to a new level of health. So if you picture like a balance scale and if you're adding, you know, these um, positive actions over time, eventually the scale is going to tip and go into a state of homeostasis and healing as opposed to dis-ease or stress. And that's what we're looking to accomplish. We're not looking to accomplish perfection. That is absolutely not our goal, progress over perfection. Um, when you react with stress to dips and setbacks, that actually is what blocks the healing and starts the cycle over and over again. And that's why people get stuck on the hamster wheel. That's how an acute illness can become a chronic illness. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Don't get caught up in that really common pitfall of recovery and healing. Know that, that those dips are a necessary and actually positive part of the healing process. Those things are coming up in order to be healed so that they may be healed because your body is ready to do that healing and resolution rather than suppression. All right, well, thanks for joining me for this video. I hope 
uh, as always, you find found that of value. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Next steps, I encourage you to uh, check out this next video that's going to be popping up in your screen here. And I'd love to invite you to what we call our connection calls. So the work uh, we do is done inside what we call our health creators collective. So it's a community of like-minded individuals that are on a similar health journey. So we're addressing these misalignments together alongside one another. And the connection calls are these opportunities to hop on a call, a group call. It's free. There's no obligation. Just come hang out with myself and other like-minded individuals that are health creators uh, in this collective and get a sense, get a taste of this work and the approach that we're taking, this quantum health creation approach that we're taking to addressing this misalignment, these misalignments. So if you want to get a sense of the actual work that we do, the approach that we take to address exactly what we're talking about in this video, the connection call is a great place to join us to do just that. Um, you don't have to participate. There's no obligation there. So if you just want to come and hang out and get a sense of the vibe, the energy, you're welcome to do that. Um, and you're also welcome to bring any and all health related questions. And I'll do my best to offer coaching, mentorship, consultation, depending on the context of what is needed uh, in the moment. So it's uh, a container, a space where, where we allow what needs to emerge to emerge. We trust that whatever needs to emerge that day or in that moment will, will come up uh, and we have a discussion around that. So I'd love to invite you the link to RSVP to the connection call. Again, it's in the description below this video. Come hang out with us. We'd love to see you there. Thanks again for watching. Sending you lots of love and light. Take care.